the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. I, let's, while we're standing, just a moment, gentlemen, thank you. Um, I just want to emphasize tomorrow night, whatever it is that you do, please do not miss tomorrow night. It's, it's going to be a night of prophecy, miracles, and impartation. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not, I'm not only doing this because it is proper. I'm not even doing this just at pastor's request. This is my own state, and I'm doing it from the depth of my heart. Praise the name of the Lord. No matter how far and how wide we travel, this is still home. Praise the name of the Lord. So I am willing to play my own part, but we must be hungry and desperate enough. Desperate enough. If I were you as a pastor, I would come with my leaders and tell them, be patient and be discerning. These are not the kinds of meetings where you just come and be casual about. Your heart must be opened and I really believe with all my heart that something will happen, um, especially tomorrow night. Praise the Lord. People in government, invite them, kings, business people. There will be something for everyone. Even if there is no space, you can climb the tree, you can sit on the fence, whatever it will take to receive this for your destiny. I think it is worth the while. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, I sat back whilst I stepped in. Um, I just sat quietly and such a burden came upon me. And usually once the Spirit of God begins to put this burden, it is because it is a response to someone's pain, someone's hunger. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. This is second service, and there's no intention to keep us long. Uh, I believe that pastor is already so blessed and honored by our sacrifice standing through the weather. But I assure you that every encounter that you have from yesterday up till Monday would be worth any sacrifice. The birth of anything valuable is painful. Praise the name of the Lord. And so whilst you're standing in one minute, I'd like you to cry to the God of heaven. Father, that which you have for me this morning, I pray that I will be a full partaker of it. Can we lift our voices and pray? Let me be a partaker of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. I'm wrapping up the last session that I started yesterday night on encounters. And then we'll deal with something else in subsequent sessions. But this is very, very important. Um... This last segment for me was a revelation. Please listen. Let me have your attention. It was a revelation that God gave me. And the knowledge of what I'm about to teach you truly has changed my life. It's brought me to dimensions that I'm not sure I otherwise would have been able to attain. 
And so every time I have the privilege of teaching it across the body of Christ, I teach it with an unusual passion because it came, I didn't read it from any book, it came by the Spirit of God. And I truly believe that it sustains power. And every time the Word of God is communicated like this from such a depth of reality, I want you to believe, open up your spirit so that you can receive. Praise the name of the Lord. But before I do this, something interesting is about to happen here. And I want you to pay attention. You don't have to stand, but whether you are an usher or not, please, I want you to participate in what is about to happen. There are people here, the grace for speed, listen, is coming upon them. And what will happen is that the hand of God will come upon them and they will begin to run physically. Like you know someone running by the Spirit. I want you, if you can, please bring those people out. This is a ministry of signs and wonders. There's nothing superstitious about what is happening. In the name of Jesus, there are people under the sound of my voice. There are families under the sound of my voice. It's a strange grace for speed. I stretch my hands across the length and the breadth of this auditorium. Please bring them out very quickly. Help them, please. Bring them out. Help them. The Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he began to run. By reason of this impartation, you will be surprised that in one month, many of you will achieve things that for decades you've not been able to achieve. There is a grace that sponsors this. And I speak it upon your life. Please bring them. Please bring them. And ushers, please help them so that they don't have to litter. Some ushers should be here. You prayed and you asked him for a visitation. Jesus is not theory. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. The spirit of delay, the spirit of delay, retrogression is breaking from lives. Break, believe me, believe what I'm telling you. The spirit of delay, age long captivities of delay breaking at the instance of his word I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me listen Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Please listen to me. In this kingdom, there is a system of spiritual operation that if you do not understand, you will consistently be shortchanged by the devil. Speed does not just happen. The Bible says Samuel spoke to them and said it was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. For all the lives and the families here represented, in the name of Jesus, by prophecy, I shift you to new dimensions. And for all of you connecting, in the name that is above all names, whether in ministry, whether in business, I decree and declare be shifted to new dimensions. Spiritually, financially, step into new levels in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Father, I pray you have brought these ones to change their lives. They represent themselves. They represent families. Here at this conference, this crusade, we decree and declare that that which you have done remains so. In the name of Jesus, that you will return back with testimonies. You will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this gentleman, lift your hands where you are, two of you. There is a grace coming on you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. I'm seeing that increase in ministry and in your lives. The Lord is shifting you to new levels by the Spirit. Please open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. Father, do not leave me the way I have come. I have come to the house of God. Please don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. You just keep your gaze on Jesus. Look beyond a man. Keep your gaze on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Who is Jonathan? I'm hearing a name, Jonathan. Just, I really wanted to teach, and I still intend that will not stay long. But I'm hearing a name, Jonathan. Who is that person? Jonathan, you are holding a camera on your hand. Is there someone like that? I'm seeing in the spirit, you are holding a camera. Who is that? What's his name? Is, is the mic working? Please help. Is, is help. What's your name, my brother? My name is Jonathan. Where are you coming from? <laughs> it's all right. Oh Where are you God. coming from? I'm from Blasted State. Please just sit for a minute if you can. You're from this state. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Because God is raising you to be a light to your family. This is what I'm seeing by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, I pray for you. Everything that represents limitations, it answers to the name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Please listen, we're going to, we'll be seated shortly. Agnes, I'm hearing a name, Agnes. You are wearing black with a necklace. Is it the necklace? Black. This is what I'm seeing. Is there someone like that? Agnes. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You are my peace, my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand hallelujah this is the minister's role there are two of you please be seated there are two of you the grace for the prophetic is coming on you while you are seated there I'm, i just saw light a strong anointing coming on a particular man of god here in the name of jesus i decree and declare truly may you drink of that fountain a genuine grace step into new encounters in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus your ministry your life will never be the same hallelujah hallelujah pastor Sam house on the rock Gombe the Lord is revealing to me that you are stepping into a new season of visibility this is what I'm seeing in the spirit and there will be such a display of signs and wonders this is a dimension you have so desired and the Lord is saying he's bringing into, into that grace. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Marvelous light, marvelous grace. It comes upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Marvelous grace. Please don't think God is wasting your time. God is answering age-long problems at once just to solve this thing. If this is what happens in this service, it was not a waste. 
We serve a living God. Please listen to what I'm telling you. We serve a living God. God is not a theoretical religious God. We serve a living God. Hallelujah. The Lord is revealing someone to me. I'm seeing your mother in Jute. That's the, the just University Teaching Hospital. Your mom. I'm seeing a sick woman there. Please, who is that person? If, if we're unable to, if we're able to just deal with that, then even if it's 10 minutes we do with the word, that's fine. But I need to minister to someone. I'm seeing your mother. I don't know who that person is. But I need to pray for that person. Madam, what do you do? What's your name? You're a pastor. I need to pray for you. Oh, there are people in the overflow. Goodness. It doesn't matter which overflow you are. You just focus on your screen and believe God. Believe God. The Lord is still ministering to me. There's someone, your mother is sick. Who is that? This gentleman, where is she? In the hospital. What's your name? Huh? Who is Japheth? I'm hearing the name yes, Japheth. Sir. Yes, sir. What's your name? Japheth. Stand up. Because the Lord wants to do a miracle, not only for your mother, but for your family. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Capros. This is oppression. No. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He says he went about healing all they that were oppressed. Every sickness is an oppression. And in the name of Jesus, here at this conference, I stand in agreement with the pastor, the angel over this house. And I declare, unto mama we speak. Let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle. And even for you, my friend, let there be a supernatural miracle for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a gentleman, you used to work in a bank. Something happened. I don't know if it was an issue. And was it that you were relieved? Let me just talk to you. You'll be the last person. You are wearing brown with a face mask. A nose or face mask. Who is that? Make sure you don't, please verify so that you don't think we're lying. What's your name, sir? Who is Samuel? I'm the one, sir. Samuel. Yes, sir. What bank? First bank, sir. First bank. Yes, when sir. were you relieved? 2018, sir. The Lord himself is honoring you. I'm saying that this is an oppression. You are a very sincere person. But there is something that comes on you and misrepresents you. Let me use him and prophesy to someone. In the name of Jesus, anyone conspiring with dark powers, manipulating your life and your destiny, in the name that is above all names, I declare them out of your life. Out of your life. Shout a believing amen. Out of your life. Sir, the Bible says, believe the Lord your God. Don't cry. So shall you be established. He said, believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. I stand by the grace of God and I say it in the open, not in the secret. That in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord restore your honor double-fold. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this man, the man holding the mic, I know you are holding a mic for someone, but God wants to speak to you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that the book of remembrance is opened over you. What do you do, sir? You are a businessman. Are you a businessman, sir? I'm seeing the month of May, June, July. These are strange months of increase. And this will come by the Spirit of God. It is the book of remembrance. The Bible says that night the king could not sleep. I'm praying for someone. In the name of Jesus, whatever has made you forgotten, I stand by the grace of God and we open unto you the book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your business and in the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I'm praying that not only will God restore but God will lift you. May, June, July. This month will be strange months of increase for you. In the name of Jesus. And our auntie, the pastor, may God grant you grace. 
multiplied grace for intercession multiplied grace in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a woman here this is one two three four five years you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb your time has come who is that person five years the Lord is showing me five years you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb let's just settle this please if they can go back to their seats God bless you ladies and gentlemen five years you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb who is that person please let me just pray for you quickly now the Lord is that spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty look at me my dear look look what is happening to her this is a, a, a lady that has been oh dear I'm praying for you may you carry superior dimensions of his presence so that you can be a blessing to people listen the world is tired of noise the world is tired of noise we need to be carriers of divine presence Careers of divine realities. I write these things to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Now, you imagine, please don't be embarrassed, but you imagine what these families may be going through. Imagine some of the things that they... You imagine what happens. This is Africa. And you know what happens. Naysayers. False visions. People who come with all kinds of things. But there is a name that is above every other name. Yes, there is. I want to pray for you. My dear sisters, listen to me. I assure you there is a God that sits in heaven. Don't be too used to pain. God is able to roll that reproach. I pray for you and I want you to believe in this prayer. I know that many people have prayed for you. But you see, every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. If there is any operation of witchcraft responsible for this, as I'm speaking to you right now, except God is not God, those chains must be broken. I declare now, chains be broken. 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 According to the time of life, I prophesy to you, return with your children. Return with your children. Return with your children. By this time, 2022, you return with your children in the name of Jesus. Regardless the medical condition, we veto it by the power of the word. And we decree and declare that only the counsel of God will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Please do not miss, especially tomorrow night I emphasize again. The Lord wants to bring us visitations and our hearts must be open to receive. For those who can, they can return back to their seats. And then while I'm teaching, please, if anyone is under the anointing, you don't have to bring them. Just help them so they don't injure themselves. Praise the Lord. I spoke about encounters and levels of encounters. Please do well to get the teaching for yesterday and then the first service this morning. Because the Bible says to buy the truth. Money is not the only currency. Passion is currency. Hunger is currency. You can use hunger to buy the truth. You can use passion, commitment to buy the truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, just lay your hands on her. Just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let there be peace right now. And in the name of Jesus Christ, let everything be over. Praise God. Thank you. That's all right. So we began to discuss the subject of encounters. How that if you want to excel in this kingdom, not only ministry, 
but in the kingdom that your excelling depends on the kinds and the levels of spiritual encounters. Are we together? And then I began to share with us levels of spiritual encounters according to Job chapter 42. Do not forget that scripture in verse 5. Job said, I have heard of you with the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. I have heard of you with the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. And I spoke yesterday about the encounter with the son of the living God. Apostle John told us, he said, this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. But he structured the administration of eternal life such that until you encounter the son, you cannot have that life. You cannot bypass the son and route through an angel or route through a man of God to have eternal life. It has to be the encounter with the son that gives eternal life. Are we together? And I told us the blessings that follow that encounter. The life of God, access to righteousness, access to the grace of God. Then we discussed yesterday about an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I told you that the Holy Spirit as a person, you can have an encounter with him. Hallelujah. It says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. The possibilities that we command in this kingdom are a product. They are a derivative of a relationship. I did say yesterday that every other religion and every other spiritual practice does not demand relationship. When you go to a herbalist, he does not need to know your name. You do not need to know his name. You do not need to know the tribe. All he needs is what are you here for? And if he can give you what you're here for, that's fine. That's all right. But when you come into the faith life, God demands a relationship. And that the power and the possibilities that you command are out of that relationship. Are we together now? Yes. And that we stand to benefit guidance, direction, and empowerment. I did tell you that the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the word. I have many things to tell you, the Bible declares, but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus is speaking. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The spirit of God, the spirit of grace, the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. That the Holy Spirit is also the confirmer of the word. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. Then I said, the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing. The administration of spiritual power resides in the office of the Holy Spirit. He's not only the custodian of it, he's the administrator of the anointing. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. And then this morning, we spoke about the encounter with the word of God. Not just as the person, Jesus. The word of God as a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom, the methodologies of the kingdom. Jesus, the way. There is a dimension of encounter that reveals it exposes you to the principles of the kingdom i told you that the bible primarily contains three things number one promises number two principles number three prophecies so every time you study scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise it says unto salvation that maturity in the kingdom depends on your encounter with the word dominion in the kingdom depends on your encounter with the word knowledge of the methodologies of the kingdom and i told us in the first service that the challenge with most believers is that we have random spiritual informations that are not sequentially arranged in a way and a manner that can produce victory in our lives so we know that the blood of jesus works we know that the name of jesus works we about the fire of the Holy Ghost, we know about communion, we know about the seed and we engage them at random with no mastery of what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome Paul admonishing his son in the gospel, Timothy said, 
If a man strives for mastery, he says that man is not crowned until he strives lawfully. Every outcome in this kingdom has spiritual principles that lead to it. God is a God of systems. And what he does is that he introduces that spiritual reality and then he creates systems around it for continuity. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So we challenged ourselves in the first service that we must contend for specific spiritual knowledge. If your church, for instance, as a man of God is not growing, just arbitrarily believing that I'll just pray and fast at random, no, 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 no. That may not be the solution. The Bible says, Proverbs 18 and verse 1, through desire, it says, a man having separated himself, he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. We must be able to study the spiritual principles that are responsible for what outcome. Are we together? And in this final session here at the second service, I want to teach on the last encounter. This one has changed my life. And I pray in the name of Jesus that it will affect you like it did me. In Jesus' name. Encounter with the body of Christ. The fourth encounter that every one of us would require if you must excel in this kingdom is not only an encounter with the Son, it's not only an encounter with the Spirit, it's not only an encounter with the Word. You need an encounter with this mystery entity called the body of Christ. Mm. The body of Christ is a very mysterious entity. Jesus himself began to speak the first time the word church will be mentioned in the Bible, the ecclesia. He said, who do men say that I am? So the revelation of the church was a strategy to end confusion. They were not clear about his identity. Who do men say that I am? Some said you are Elias. Some said you are one of the prophets. And he said, okay, you've worked with me. What is your verdict? Who do you think I am? And Peter, the Bible says, speaking by the Spirit, he said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And he says, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the rock is not Peter, the rock is this strategy. Upon this strategy, I will build my church. And I will build it in a way and a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So the church is not just a building. Please listen carefully. The church is not even just people. The church is a spiritual strategy. The only strategy that is able to fulfill the agenda of the Father is called the church. The church is more than a people. The church is more than a building. The church is a spiritual strategy. Invented by the intelligence of God himself. The only platform that is able to host God. The only platform that is able to advance the kingdom. The only platform that is able to communicate this global harvest is called the church. And you need an encounter with the body of Christ. Walk with me. Let's look at a few scriptures. Number one, 1 Corinthians, please, chapter 11. 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. We'll begin to read from verse 23, but the verse of emphasis is 27 down to 30. A little background, please. Paul, it, this was at a point where Paul was on his voyage carrying out his apostolic ministry and the church in Corinth at this time was experiencing such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There were signs, wonders, baptisms, miracles, administrations of several dimensions and there was a very big confusion in the church. There was a mix of several things. People who were taking the wine for communion and they were getting drunk. People who were prophesying arbitrarily. People who were having all kinds of things. And 
Paul needed to come and bring decency and order. Are we together now? That was the whole idea behind 1st and 2nd Corinthians. To the end that all things be done decently and in order. And in order for him to do that, he now had to sit them down in a conference and then compartmentalize the operations of the Holy Spirit and give meaning to the experiences they were having. Because they didn't know the name of what they were having was called word of knowledge, word of wisdom. It was Paul who began to define, to give names and compartmentalize these operations. He was an amazing man. And in one of his discourse, please back to the scripture, he now brought a mystery of the Lord's body, the table and the cup. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you. So we know where it came from. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. Uh -huh. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body. Take note. Which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 25. And after the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and ye drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Now, the mystery is unveiled from 27. Wherefore, it's a caution now. Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, he shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Understand what he's saying here. 28. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 29. The Bible says whoever eats and drinks unworthily he will eat and drink damnation to himself and the sin that he has done is not discerning the Lord's body as a result of this verse 30 he says many are weak look at this now as a result of this sin of not discerning the Lord's body many not few are weak many are sickly and many do sleep if the Bible says many, it means many. That means there are lives today that are limited. There are lives today that are weak. There may be ministries that are weak simply because they could not discern the Lord's body. Now, he was not talking about bread, wafers, and wine. Those were just emblems. He was talking about his body. Are we together now? That even though I am the head, I have a body that you must discern. And failure to discern the body of Christ, it would cost your destiny, it would cost your church, it would cost your ministry. What is in the body of Christ? The body of Christ, listen to me, is the only entity that can host the possibilities of God. The body of Christ is not a church. The body of Christ is the collective group of believers together. You have to understand this. Now I'll explain a few things and I pray that God will grant us the grace to understand. Please look up. The way God works with us is that he reveals himself dimensionally. You have to understand this. God is almighty. He is I am. But when it has to do with the revelation of himself, he fragments himself into dimensions and reveals to people. Are we in agreement on that? So if you are Oral Roberts, he will reveal that Rafa dimension as the healing God. Are we together? If you are Benny Hinn, you will know him as Savior. Several dimensions. And the way God deals with us is that when you begin your spiritual journey, you usually will begin on a neutral ground. But as you progress, God will now begin to shift you to the area of your call. And the area of your calling, 
the area of your commissioning will demand certain trainings. Are we together? So say for instance, there are two gentlemen. Can I use you again? Thank you. Let's have one more person. We have to hurry up so we end on time. Thank you. Watch this. Thank you. Watch this gentleman. Let's assume that these gentlemen began their spiritual journeys together. Are we together? Praying, maybe fasting. If this man has been ordained to be a prophet and this man has been ordained to be an evangelist, somewhere in the course of their training, the Holy Ghost is now going to begin to customize his dealings with them. You will find out that two of them will not be able to work together again. Because the context of their trainings will change. This man is called into the prophetic. Chances are that an unusual release of the grace for prayer will come upon him. Even more than what this man would experience. So there will be problems. Because when they pray after three hours, this guy is tired. He wants to go home. But this guy is just about to start. Because he will need to labor to be able to obtain that grace. Are you seeing now? Something is happening to their trainings. At the end of it, this man will get the prophetic grace. This man will be an evangelist. But now here's where the problem is. There is a side effect to the way God trains us. And he left it intentionally. The side effect is that when God is focusing on your area of call, he usually will not introduce you to other dimensions that are there. But it does not mean those dimensions will not be needed in your life. Listen carefully. So, while this man is learning the prophetic, the Holy Ghost will not tell him anything about administration. The Holy Ghost will not tell him anything about excellence. The Holy Ghost will not tell him anything about leadership. The scope of his training is prayer, fasting, warfare, the prophetic, revelation. Are you seeing this? Just as an example. If this guy starts a ministry only with that dimension, very soon, the area he has neglected will start showing in his life. Are you getting blessed now? Whilst God is building him in the area of the prophetic, there is another person who God is building in the area of administration and excellence. If this man is not careful, all he will have is intellectual knowledge and a passion for excellence. He would downplay prayer. He would downplay fasting. He would downplay the prophetic. He will also start an organization that is excellent but full of demons. Excellent but full of sickness. Excellent but full of all kinds of failure. So here's what God did. He will fragment himself and reveal to you but leave you with an assignment to connect with the larger body for the other part of what you do not have. Are you getting that now? You have to understand this. So if this man acknowledges that as powerful as my dealing is, that is not all there is to God. He can now honor this man for learning administration. Now administration has been added to his prophetic. He can now have a healthy church that prophesies and is still excellent. Hearing is where the devil has deceived many of us because because of the strength of the result that comes from your training and the pride of men we usually find it difficult to acknowledge other dimensions that are not captured in our lives why because eventually come sir eventually you are going to have mentors mentees who are learning under you and they are only going to learn what is your dimension of reality. Are we together now? And so when they see a level of excellence like this, it is your assignment as a mature spiritual leader to be unashamed to tell them, I will teach you the dimension given to me. But don't you think that is all you should learn? When you find another dimension, don't fight it. Embrace it and add it. It is the body of Christ. Please sit down. So the administrator mentors young people and tells them if you see all these guys praying and fasting, don't mind them. The only devil is the one in your mind. You may be right until the real attack comes. Are we together now? Oh yes. I assure you there are real attacks. The realm of the spirit does not play games. It's a real attack. 
Now, at that point, you are confused. The people you are raising come to meet you and say, Pastor, you taught us to be excellent. My books are intact. I did my job well. I submitted the proposal. Why is it not working? The answer is here. And yet, because you have not connected, you will have to create a theology to explain a way and tell the man, maybe you are not serious. Many of the answers we look for are not in heaven. They are already in the body of Christ. If only we have the eyes to discern the graces that God has put. So, I'm here now with a prophetic ministry. Prophesying, but people are stealing money because there's no excellent administration. You are prophesying, but there's trouble. You can't raise leaders. Are, we seeing, are you seeing that now? So I go to God and say, Lord, why is ministry not working? Even though I'm a genuine prophet of God, the answer, God will tell you he has already sent the answer. The answer does not have to come to you directly. But once the answer is in the body of Christ, it is still yours. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. This has been the age-long explanation of the limitations that are in the lives of very great people because for some reason and I'm, I'm saying this passionately again because this is my own state there is something called the unity of faith unity does not mean uniformity we're never going to do the same thing let me just tell you the truth however there must be a recognition and we must be unashamed to mentor the people that God is bringing to us to acknowledge the fact that we do not have all of God as far as the dispensing of truth is concerned. For we see in part and we prophesy in part. So when I come here, so please, can I use you, sir? I am able to hold Reverend Akila's hand. Yes, even though you call me great Apostle Joshua Selman, and I am grateful, but there are dimensions that if I want, I must have to come to him and acknowledge the dealings of God on his life. If I ignore the grace on him, I will still be anointed in my area of call, but suffer in other areas. Let me give you an instance. Within minutes, I spoke to people here who had problems. Do you know there are many voices that in five minutes can end the captivity of families? But because you have not discerned. Many of the problems that we have, the answers are around the body of Christ. God bless you, sir. Thank you. In the body of Christ, there is a woman who did not go to school and yet raise 12 children and all those children are responsible you think it's just motherhood there has to be an anointing making that happen and yet there is someone else please don't feel bad struggling with two children if only you can discern that the answer it doesn't always have to be preachers this is why the gathering of the saints is powerful because you are not only receiving from the man teaching the person seated next to you may be carrying a grace that is the answer to your age-long problem it's why pride is a destroyer an encounter with the body of Christ you've heard me say I'm a product of many anointings it was right here in Joss that I traveled down to attend one of Reinhard Bonke's crusades. I was in that crowd. When I saw this man doing great things, I would have said I'm a man of God too. That's what we say. That's the deception that keeps us small. Preached a very simple message. And you know, to those of us that God has helped a bit with the spirit of revelation, there is this pride. We usually will not listen. If it's not deep, I don't listen. Unfortunately, Renard Bonke shared a simple story. And he was about to take water and then minister the baptism. That was the first time in my life I had a visionary encounter of the Holy Spirit. Something happened to me in that meeting that I would never forget. Today, he's gone to be with the Lord. If I had stayed in my pride, that man would have gone today and I would not receive anything. Please listen to me. When you receive, it does not demean you. 
you are only equipping in fact your openness to the body of Christ is proof that you really love your people because it means you want to bring dimensions to them now you see what Reverend Akila is doing by creating a platform even though it is house on the rock but you know that this program is not really house on the rock this is the body of Christ please hear me men and women of God especially respectfully speaking we must get to a point where we have a healthy acknowledgement and a communication of mutual honor for the sacrifices of one another. It is true that we are not at the same spiritual level. It is true that our hunger and our press is not the same. But we must have a healthy regard. Are we blessed? A woman, I'm sure she may be here. Yesterday after the service, while I was in the office, she came to greet me with her two children, two adorable children. And I have never seen two children memorize scripture like this in my whole life. She was memorizing the scripture with them. They were praying for me, the children. I said, what is this? I know how long it took me to learn those scriptures. And those kids were effortlessly reciting it. Someone is here flogging their child every day to learn John 3.16. And the child is not getting it. Whereas there is a grace that resides in a woman. That through honor and discernment you can receive. When you learn what I'm teaching you tonight. No challenge will live in your life for a long time. Because you will search for. There has to be a grace in the body of Christ. That can solve that problem. If your problem is prayerlessness. There is a grace already assigned. I know what many of us want. We want the credit to our name. We want God to give you directly so you don't give credit to anyone. But even if you are Saul and you meet Jesus, you will still go to the house of Ananias for the continuation of your training. Not even an encounter with Jesus will ignore an encounter with the body of Christ. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, there are people who have died today who should not have died. Don't feel bad. Had they met the graces assigned to them, there are weak people who are not supposed to be weak today. There are politicians who should never be down if only they could discern. Let me answer one question and we'll pray. Let me tell you why it is difficult to receive. And I will start with an admission. The admission is that the vessels that carry this grace are very, very ethin and imperfect. This is where the problem is. Because of the imperfection of the vessels. Are we together now? Yes. Moses was a temperous man. I hope you know that very temperous man yet the spirit that was in him as a stammerer came on 70 elders and none of them could keep quiet yet that's what was in one man and he was quiet part of what was on him came on 70 elders and they could not keep quiet yet one man was carrying that grace Elijah was an angry man you need to really clap for Elijah and don't blame the sons of the prophet. The sons of the prophet were being mentored by this harsh guy. For disturbing him, fire comes down. What kind of a man is that? God, can't you replace him and use another one? The strange thing about God is while you are hoping God does not use those vessels, he has covenanted that I will still continue. So if you must, if you must get onto that dimension, you must tap into that grace. Why would God not replace Elijah? <laughs> if you want to be Elijah, get ready for insult from Elijah and be prepared to endure it. The Bible may not record it, but we are matured enough to know that you cannot work with Elijah. It's not just good morning every day. The sons of the prophet were angry and Elijah said, do what you would do. I will still follow quietly. So when the mantle came upon him, he said, finally, I have it. What do you want? A man is living. You are living and then you're the one person who had stayed with you. 
Shouldn't you be wise enough to say, I love you, my dear son. You have served me. He said, quickly, I'm going. What do you want? A double portion of your anointing. You have asked a hard thing. Wouldn't you be angry and go back and say, carry your grace and, and go to heaven with it? The mystery of receiving from the body of Christ, I wish I had time, is hidden in the riddle of Samson. Samson was going to go and see a woman and while he was going, a lion attacked him. Is that true? And he tore that lion with his bare hands. And then after a week, he was passing again. And he saw something mysterious. He saw that bees left every tree and came to a carcass and put honey there. Why will bees not look for fresh trees with green leaves? What are bees looking for that they come to a carcass? And put honey there. So when he met the Philistines. He said I have a riddle. Out of something strong. Has come something sweet. And the people could not. They could not unravel it. Let me tell you the mystery of receiving from the body of Christ. You will only receive the honey. If you can endure the smell of the carcass. Even though the carcass smells. The honey is right there. If you can endure the smell of the honey. Hear what I'm telling you. This is why many people do not receive. Oh, this pastor is a tribalistic man. I agree. You are not wrong. But that's too small a reason to allow your destiny to suffer that much. Adaptation is proof of honor. You must learn the stamina of endurance is the reason why many young people never receive mantles because they want to be successful at their own terms listen to me many of us young people today have not been able to receive graces from our fathers even in the flesh because of our anger my father was a sad person but he was sad and still wise in his lifetime you saw his honor and yet we cannot endure and receive it we live in a generation that is obsessed with pleasure. We want success to come and meet us at our own terms. No, sir. Your prayer is the person who serves your food every day called mama. You have traveled to Lagos. You have traveled to Ghana. You have traveled to London looking for an anointing that mama has right in your house because she's not educated that woman wakes up 12 o'clock every day to pray till 2 she has taught it for 25 years that is more than physical discipline there is a grace that makes it happen now you are a preacher and you sleep and wake up by 9 o'clock in the morning even if you sleep by 8 you will still wake up by 9 it's an attack if you go to mama and say mama even though i know i'm a celebrity man of god but i come to you recognizing that the grace i'm running around looking for you may not be educated but you have this grace mama can look at you and say my son i met a missionary in 1975 i cooked food for him and he blessed me he said you will never go down spiritually and that's the grace speaking do you know there are mantles and anointings that swim across our environment every day but our pride and lack of discernment is what has kept us small there is no reason why anyone in just should be prayerless there are enough graces and unctions and mantles to solve that problem if you have the opportunity to discern there is no reason why anyone in this state should be mediocre there are exceptional people that have been raised from the plateau to the ends of the earth have you discerned their grace there is no reason why people should be begging for food up and down there are people, veterans in business, men and women who understand the economic system of the kingdom. I'm not just talking of people who are carnal. No, 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 no. For this cause, many are weak. This is the reason why there is a lot of prayer, maybe in your assembly, but there is no establishment because it is a prayer ministry, but there is no communication of doctrine. 
you have ignored the teaching ministry and laughed at teachers and says because they don't have signs and wonders that's why they teach from morning till night now you see people pray and there is a side effect to praying without the word because you'll be exposed to the realm of the spirit then you will interact with all kinds of spirits your hunger will drive you to the realm of the spirit but the word of god is not there to coordinate you so you find out that people fast for seven days and return back with strange spirits they fast for seven days and they admit them in jute because they are supposedly praying in tongues without control it is doctrine that gives balance to spiritual experiences What do you benefit from your encounter with the body of Christ? Please sit down. We have to wrap up. I forgot this is a morning service. This kind of teachings happen with night vigils. Three or four hours of solid prayer. Another two or three hours of solid word. You back it up with a serious demonstration of the spirit. And even the gate of your destiny knows that you spend time with God. We must trust God for grace to take God seriously. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number one. The first blessing. The first benefit. Of encounter with the body of Christ. Thank you gentlemen. Thank you so much. Is access to the multifaceted dimensions of God. Write it down. God operates dimensionally. Acts chapter 18. Please give us the last four verses. Acts chapter 18. Access to the multifaceted dimensions of God. God operates dimensionally. The dimension you have may not be all there is. He is not only Rapha. He is not only Jaira. He is not only El Shaddai. He's not only seeking you, there is more. Even in heaven, he said, come up here. There is still room for more. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, you just write it. This was the story of Apollos. The Bible tells us that Paul having passed through the upper coast. Well, he came and met this man in Ephesus called Apollos. Are we together? And the Bible says he was mighty in scripture. He was eloquent. He was fervent in spirit. But he knew only the baptism of John. Now if you, if you were to be the member of Apollo's church, the only thing you would know is the baptism of John. Not wrong, but incomplete. So here's how the devil has deceived us. We believe that single-handedly we are the ultimate custodians of all there is in God. And we discourage people from embracing from the body. Now, listen to me. Let me balance something. I know that administratively and from the standpoint of fatherhood and leadership, as a spiritual leader, you owe a responsibility to make sure your people are secured. Your people don't vacillate around into confusion. You have a responsibility. John 17, Jesus was praying and he said, All you have given me, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. He had to explain why John, why Judas was out of the twelve. Jesus had to give the father an explanation. What happened to Judas? So as a man of God, it's not just to say, okay, because the body of Christ is there. So you allow your members and your people to just vacillate and roam around. No, no. However, there must be an unashamedness whilst doing ministry or leadership or business. To let people know sincerely that I continue to be an effective servant of God. Growing and exploring the riches in Christ. However, I admit to you that all I have is not all there is. There are dimensions beyond this horizon. And that I will not, under guidance, I will not hinder you from tapping into those dimensions. It is selfish to allow your ego stop people from tapping into other dimensions of supply in the body. And it is dangerous to consciously or unconsciously make yourself the ultimate reference. No, sir. The best of us is only an effective member 
not no one individual is the body of Christ house on the rock today has been used by God as that donkey that we have all had that access to and I am so honored and in the secret and in the open sincerely Reverend Akila has said it again and again that this is beyond the body of Christ that's why they took the pain to go through all of this and set up the stage so that the body be blessed I have preached there are few churches in this nation in terms of denominations that have not preached in and sometimes I have my personal convictions as a person doctrinally speaking and based on my work with God however I submit to you and I say it with all humility there is no city no denomination that has consciously or knowing me say no 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 we're not interested in you it doesn't matter which one do you know why because when you approach people with honor knowing that you acknowledge there is a dimension of God they have they will also reciprocate by respecting what you carry but when you downplay people imagine that I came into this city with a mentality to outshine as though the men of God in this city are just playing games you will be disappointed even though you love me we never come into cities to push down and demean what God is doing rather we come by the privilege of the election of grace to be support systems to lift the hands of those who labor in doctrine day and night unity does not mean teaching the same thing that will never happen based on our work with God we have been exposed to different levels of light but is it possible that a house on the rock program can be happening and a pastor or a ministry that is not house on the rock says this is kingdom come how can I provide buses how can I provide chairs you don't even need to announce my name I am a member of this church but I know that what God is doing is a real visitation and I will shelve my differences and see to it that Christ is lifted if we do not listen to this the generation of the children coming will hate God will fight God and the devil will give them coordinated alternatives coordinated alternatives are we blessed the vessels will always remain imperfect and earthy hmm Many of you love Jesus because you have not seen him. In principle, men always love those they have not seen. I assure you, if Jesus walks in the flesh, after one week, many of you will run away from him. You read about the Jesus you so love. Are you aware of the people he flogged in the temple? Your Jesus. Are you aware of the names that he called people? Jesus you love God's generals oh I love them go and find out those who witnessed some of their time they were persecuted and hated you love Archbishop Benson Idahosa ask the people who worked with him I, I wish you were his secretary or his PA you may almost be tempted to say finally he has gone and yet this is the man we celebrate today most times, we have this seem something, it will really happen. If you can respect it, you can get that grace and add it to your enlightenment. Are we together? This is what I learned in my life. I have received from several people graces. I'm not just talking of preachers alone. No, I discern. I was ministering in Kano. I'm wrapping up now. Ministering in Kano at the PFN crusade some years ago. And then I'm prophesying and mighty things are happening. People are just looking at me. Apostle Joshua Selman. And here comes this woman that I called out by the spirit. And she came out to hide. It was an honor to see me. And yet God opened my eyes. And I, I was seeing the substance of power this woman carried in the spirit. She could not even speak English very well. 
And she told me, she said, every 15 days, she finishes the Bible. Every 15 days in Hausa, Hausa Bible, Genesis to Revelation. Ah, I would be stupid to still remain a man of God at that point. Mama, can you, is it possible to pray for me? A woman that can read the whole Bible every 15 days. I assure you, no matter how diligent you are, it has to be a grace, a solid grace from heaven. I remember I met a gentleman who fasted for 400 days. I've not fasted for 400 days. Many people tell lies that they fasted for this and that. It's only God that knows the truth. But I met a man who genuinely fasted for 400 days, six to six. I wrapped up the last day with him and yet he was still following me for impartation. I said, this, this, this body of Christ is mysterious. Here is a man fasting for 400 days and yet he's still hoping I will lay hands on him. Who have you ignored? Who did God send to you as a prayer, an answer to prayer and you ignored? Mama may not have been a businesswoman but all through your life you never saw her back quarter to shame there is a grace on her that will force blessings to come from anywhere do you not know you need that grace in the wicked world we live today everything you have you got it yourself nobody is willing to invest in your life something is wrong in this morning service we are going to pray and you are not just going to look at God and look at me you may be sitting down close to someone that you do not know the kind of grace that he or she carries. Let me wrap up before we pray with a very interesting story. Many of you may have heard who listen to my teachings. This story. I attended a conference many years ago and the man of God was sharing a very touching story. Mighty miracles happening in his church and yet he was dying in his home. Poverty, lack, failure, Yet people were coming to testify every week. And he was the one praying for them. And then one time, while service was going on, the wife got up and walked away. Imagine like the, wo the woman of God just gets up and walks out of this place. People began to talk, I hope everything is alright. And he finished his counseling and rushed back home. My wife, what is wrong? She didn't utter one word. He sat down at table to eat. Did I offend you? I can apologize. She didn't tell him anything. The first thing he noticed was that the plates that she brought food for him was not the usual one. She took her time, got some of the best plates and she was serving him. He said, what is this? Please go and we've been married for long. Let's not do this children's thing. Bring food for me and let me eat. She didn't utter a word again. So the man became concerned and when she brought the last item and dropped it, she looked at him and went down on her knees and said, servant of God, my home is in trouble. You see. When the man climbed the stage, he was a man of God, but she did not tap into that dimension of the man of God. She tapped into husband. So all they had was children, not solutions. The person you may need whose grace you have been praying for may even be your younger brother. In one year, he got five jobs. For ten years, you are still looking for one. There is a grace on him. But I bring you the instruction. Can you unravel the riddle of Samson this morning? Don't cry. Some of you are crying. God is speaking to you. Man of God, you would have been greater than this. If only you saw that the gate man you had, that guy prays for five hours every day. Can you endure the smell so that you will receive the good in them? Many of us young people, when God grants us grace, especially on the plateau, for healings or prophecy, we go back to our local churches and we insult some of the pastors. No revelation. This man doesn't have any revelation. He's not even filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Yet he has stayed for 30 years in ministry. And you are full of the Holy Ghost. You are just four years old and you are about to collapse. There is a grace for stability you can receive. That Baba preached before you were born. And he's still standing today. He may not know all the Greek and Hebrew. But there is a grace for sustenance. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. Hallelujah. From the day I learned this, I made up my mind as a covenant that I will never talk against anybody. I made up my mind as a covenant that is not only preachers I will honor. I will honor children. I have learned more from children. I have learned faith from children. You tell a child you will buy him a toy. There is no demon that will erode that memory from his mind. He will come to meet you with confidence and boldness. Remember, Uncle, you said you will buy me a bicycle. And he puts pressure on your ego till you go and borrow money and buy that bicycle. Apostle, they make too much noise in that church. I agree. Can you endure the noise and receive that prophetic word? Apostle, they don't spend time teaching. They teach all kinds of things. Can you endure and learn other things? Learn fellowship. Learn Hallelujah. Are we together? I don't like that traditional ruler. He does not like smiling. Can you learn leadership? I don't like my mother and my father. They would have given birth to me in America or UK. I would have had dual citizenship. Now look where they came and gave birth to me. You keep talking like that while the gates of destiny keeps shutting over you. We are going to pray. The first prayer is repentance. Lord, I repent for my sarcasm over the body of Christ. I have programmed woes over my life. I have talked about men of God. I have talked about business people. I have talked about people in government. Listen, without genuine repentance, you would not see the power of God. Please pray. Now I have learned that more than an encounter with the Son of God, more than an encounter with the Holy Spirit, more than an encounter with the Word, I need an encounter with this mystery entity called the body of Christ. Are you praying? Lord, I obtain mercy. I've criticized excellent ministries. I've criticized prayer ministries. I've criticized prophetic ministries. I've criticized teaching ministries. I've criticized exceptional business people. I've criticized young people who made it early in life. I've criticized homes with well-cultured children. Pray, we're wrapping up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For a very long time, every time I would come to this city to just visit my family in a very strange way, I discovered that the moment I got home, it was as if I was not a man of God again. That cloak of power and grace, I would no longer feel it again. And one day, my biological mom, she was here yesterday. She got angry and she got sad and said, no, this one is just not, this is not just my son. You are a man of God and will tap into that grace. There are men today, the solution to your problem is with your wife. But you are just looking at her as a woman you've paid dowry over. And she's blessing others and prophesying to others. And yet your life is not rising. Same thing with women. Some of you, your children. Some of you, your pastors. 
there are some of you here this man of God Reverend Akila you have seen what God is doing with him and some of you may just trivialize that and say oh he's just lucky that's the statement of arrogance Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him do you know that I came late yesterday into this city and even whilst the program was on, I was shocked and amazed. I'm sorry for having to say it, but Reverend Akila, I, I don't know if he left here. He had to come to the hotel to come say hello, just check up before he would run back. I said, Pastor, in my mind, I said, you didn't have to do this. And then I remembered, honor is the key for access. Who have you dishonored in the secret and in the open? Many of you listen to messages of men of God in the secret, admiring what they carry, and you come out and pretend you did not listen and criticize them. That's why the teachings don't work. Because honor must be genuine, it must be sincere. There are politicians in this city who God has helped. They have helped to build the plateau to what it is today. We criticize them left, right, and center, tear them down. Yet in our heart of hearts, we desire a bit of those graces. Can you endure the smell so that you will receive the grace? Prayer point number two. Lord, I receive forbearance and endurance. Forbearance and endurance. I know that there are men of God who are silly, resp respectfully speaking. I know some of them may be arrogant. I know some of them may be, but do you have the grace to endure? There are many business people who can be very sarcastic. Are you willing to endure? Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I receive the grace to endure. I receive the grace to endure. It's time for a new season. As we celebrate 19 years of God's faithfulness. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a path. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.